Hi, my name is Fatih Nara. I'm Chief Architect in Global Telco Partnerships Group at Red Hat. Today, we'll talk about hyperscalers for telecom and telecom applications. Before we jump into a conversation, I would like to go through a brief background of myself and how it is relevant or not into this, into this conversation that we will have soon. I have started my career at Nortel as a telecom software engineer, particularly working in HLR and IMS development. Later, I joined Ericsson as a system integrator engineer, delivered Ericsson IMS and IPTV solutions around the world with third-party integrations into the ecosystems surrounding those solutions. After which, I would like to focus on virtualization with OpenStack and Kubernetes. I joined Canonical Ubuntu as a solution architect and delivered telecom application delivery on top of OpenStack as well as Kubernetes. I would like to experience the DevOps side of the thing, so I joined Verizon as a DevOps engineer part of Verizon Cloud, where I was part of the group deliver, designing and delivering edge applications with Kubernetes. After which, I have joined Google, mainly around application modernization with Anthos, and deliver different business vertical applications on-premise as well as on Google platform with Anthos. Then I have joined Red Hat as a, as a chief architect designing the blueprints as well as implementing them in the field with hyperscalers, delivering telecom applications with the new approaches and with the new scales in mind. Telecom as a business vertical covering different application silos. Could be network, could be OSS, BSS, IT side of the things, but mainly the network side of the house, where we are talking about the VNFs and CNS, mainly around the network virtualization, has been driven by standards bodies, the Etsy, 3GPP, IATF. Accumulated a complexity over a certain period of time. Due to the fact that these standards bodies designing these solution umbrellas with interfaces, sitting on top of different protocol stacks, driven by different organizational bodies, brought up the challenge of how a telecom product vendor will interpret these standards and turn into a code and turn into a product and turn into a life cycle model, brought up uncompliant interfaces between different vendor solutions, as well as hassles of maintaining them over different releases of the same product, same vendor. Cost of change, over a period of time, hasn't, or not only about writing or changing the code by means of delivering it, but also about the talent and the mindset that will drive the same experience for a consumer to upgrade the software release and running on different infrastructures has been a, one of the key difficult points for this journey. At the point, Telecom network applications hit to the virtualization milestone and abstracted from an underlying hardware where it used to be a proprietary hardware before, now running on commodity hardware through thanks to the hypervisors, come to a point that these applications as a software, individual software packages could be deployed and used and consumed and maintained on hyperscalers, i.e. public cloud infrastructures. Doing so, we unlock the AAA, availability of infrastructure, accessibility of it, as well as affordability of it. Multiplying by the scale, giving you ability to access different geographies, higher number of consumers, leveraging automation, lowering time to market, as well as lowering the manual labor, provided necessary return of investment risk lowering, and co-sharing them with hyperscalers. In order to achieve these points that we have told, the applications, i.e. the telecom applications, should 
apply 12 factor gene therapy, not from software perspective, but also organizational practices perspective, how you're organiz organizing your engineering resources, how you're using them by means of roles and responsibilities, and turning them into a good approach for microservices design, delivery, and maintenance. If you don't do that, if you keep maintaining the one giant application in a box approach, although you're not in a box anymore physically, but you're still in a box virtually as a container image or a VM image, you are pretty much faking the cloud evolution. The cost will be not able to maintain that solution and also not able to integrate that solution into the ecosystem surrounding you. And also you're sacrificing yourself, not able to use the cloud native toolboxes that is provided to you by open source communities. The dimensions of this evolution into cloud native when using hyperscaler infrastructures could be multiple. Most important thing, thing, one of the key important things actually as a developer, as a consumer is mature release-based documentation and availability of it. Maturity and extendability of the platform that you're deploying your application. In order to achieve that, you need to perform some sort of a certification and lifecycle management of it, together with the tooling surrounding your systems with CICD and GitHub methodology approaches. And you know what? Telecom applications likes to be so special, especially in networking wise, to have multiple interfaces, different protocol and port support, different MTU sizes, and so on and so forth. So advanced, advanced networking cap capabilities and features of these platforms are critically important. So how is the picture for future look like? That's actually, it's not for a picture for a future, it's a picture for today. Starting from your source repos, it could be your code base, it could be your configuration files, uh, hosted and owned by a single source of truth, say GitHub repos or your source repos. Driving, if you perform any change that triggers automatic pipeline actions, workflows, first testing them and then returning the test results and making sure everything is good and delivering now into production. This is the end-to-end -end workflow being handled by multi-cluster management together with the GitOps operators in collecting the necessary events and logs and metrics, not from per platform perspective, as well as applications perspective, and feeding into your orchestrator where Kubernetes resides, together with the necessary configuration management duties where Ansible Tower plays that role for you. As we have been saying, this is not a future. Future is now. If you go to cloud.redhat.com, you will see that the homogeneous experience, consistent experience for application delivery and consumption is already available on multiple infrastructure types, including hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, Google, together with on-premise deployments with the bare metal support. You can see from single pane, from a single view that you can create these clusters, deploy these applications with the zero touch provisioning, with the pipeline and workflow approaches, and leverage the documentation in place already for you. So turning your business needs together with your vision and the people you have or you might you would like to have into a strategy and run the strategy through your partnerships, such as with Red Hat, turn into an execution model where we can provide you the partnership, necessary partnership as well as co-ownership of these platforms with software as a service approaches. I would like to thank you for your time today. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to reach out to us. We will be happy to answer. We will be happy to work with you on any business matters or any business needs you have. Thank you.